Hey guys, Ray here. Welcome to the channel. I like to explore power options when the power goes out. So today we are looking at using a typical mid-size power station as a power option in case the power goes out for you. Okay, for this test, we're gonna be running my typical house refrigerator. We're gonna be running my Wi-Fi router, my laptop, and then we're gonna also run my TV in separate tests. I'll also include a few extra tests if you're thinking about using this power station for camping or taking it for a power source on your work site. Okay, I'll be running this test on the DJI 1000. So this battery will maintain 70% of its capacity after 4,000 cycles. So that's like discharging this every day for 10 years. Um, so you're probably not gonna do that. The capacity of the battery is 1,024 watt hours. Uh, it does accept solar, but I'll be testing that in a future video. It supports 2,200 watts of continuous output with double that as a surge capacity. And there's supposedly fans on here, but I've been using this for a month and I have not heard the fans turn on once. Uh, so it says it operates at 23 decibels. So even though I'll be running the test on this power station, there are, uh, there's a power station from EcoFlow that is very similar size. It's the uh, EcoFlow Delta 2 and EcoFlow Delta 3. Also the Blue Eddy, if you have a Blue Eddy, the Blue Eddy AC180 is also very similar to this one. But if you've got one of those other power stations, the results should be somewhat similar. I'll go into a little bit of that during the video. So in addition, about a year ago, I ran a similar test with a 100 amp hour, 12 volt lithium battery. And I have a really efficient uh, Victron inverter here that I connected straight to the battery. And we will compare some of the results to this, contrast that with uh, one of these power stations. Why you might want a power station, or maybe you want to build your own. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. You want to have some fun? Come along. Okay, here's the first item we are going to test. This is my house fridge. This is not in a uh, special fridge. This isn't one of those special inverter fridges. Just a regular house fridge you'd pick up at Home Depot. So I do have five kids, so this fridge gets used a ton. So anytime someone opens the door, all the air, cold air comes out and it has to run the compressor. So if you don't open your fridge very much, you're fridge is probably going to run a lot longer. Yeah, the kids are just getting out of school, so they're going to open that fridge a lot. Okay, here's our power station. Here's the plug for the fridge. Now, before I plug the fridge in, I'm going to put this meter in place. This is going to measure all the power coming out of the fridge for this specific test. Okay, we'll see how many kilowatt hours comes out of that. So again, this unit has about a one kilowatt hour battery. So we'll see how efficient uh, this inverter is. This is the EcoFlow Delta 2 with about the same size battery. This one did about 75% efficiency. So we'll have to see how efficient this one is uh, when it's done. Many hours later. Okay, so it looks like this DJI power station ran the fridge for about nine, for nine hours and 15 minutes. And so I measured the total power that came out of the unit into the fridge, and that was 0.66 kilowatt hours. And the battery is just about one kilowatt hour. So that's about 65% efficient. And that's specifically for running a fridge. Now, I think I heard somewhere that if you run the inverter at like 70% capacity. So with a larger load, you get a lot more efficiency out of uh, the power stations. Now the Delta II was more efficient. On, in my test, this one was about 75% efficient. But the DJI 1000 does have, the inverter has a little bit more power. So that's a little bit, that's understandable. So I did run the DJI with a larger load. Here's a coffee pot. I think I got over 24 cups of coffee out of this and it was about 80% efficient. I cooked this large breakfast, bacon, hash browns, eggs, and french toast, and ended up having 38% of the battery left. I was curious how long this battery would last if I took it out to a job site to work. So I cut this two by four 50 times and I used 6% of the battery. So 
with that ratio, I should be able to almost cut 900 uh, two by fours. So should have plenty of power to go around. So one of the reasons why I wanted a power station this size is I could take it to a job site and any plug that looks like this, this will run any appliance that has a plug like this. Now this one will run most of them, but there might be some other, maybe a welder, it won't be able to run. Now my home system, this came out to be over 80% efficient. I think it was like 85% efficient. However, this has a really small inverter. This is only uh, 500 uh, VA, which is uh, less than 500 watts of output. Yeah, the battery capacity of this is about 1.2 kilowatt hours. But this one obviously you gotta put together. This one doesn't have any way to accept solar power. These units, you could just buy them from the store, haul them around, they accept solar power. You don't have to uh, wire anything together. These are really nice. But if you want a much larger power system, this is running my entire house electrical panel. And I've got another video on this, but this obviously is much more expensive. Okay, next let's do the Wi-Fi router test. Okay, so here's my Xfinity Wi-Fi router. Uh, nothing fancy about this router. It doesn't have a spot to put DC in, so I have to, unfortunately, have to convert everything from the battery to AC, and then it goes into this unit, and then there must be something in this unit that converts it back to DC. So we are gonna lose a lot of efficiency there, but that's what we have. Okay. It's 9.45, let's see how long it lasts. So over the last month, I have been using this as a UPS for my uh, Wi-Fi router. So basically when I'm testing things in my house, I'm turning off power, my Wi-Fi router will never lose power. Okay, it's been about three hours and 10 minutes. We used 11%. So at the three hour mark, we are at 90%. So we used 10% of our power. Right now it's using 15 watts. Okay, so really I wanna find out how much time it will take to use 100% of the battery without waiting that long. So I should be able to use ratios to figure that out. So right now I know that it takes three hours to use 10% of the battery. So that ratio should be equal to how much time it will take to use 100% of the battery. So if I got my equation here, I can solve um, for T which represents the total time it will take to use 100% of the battery. And so I can just uh, times both sides by 100, and uh, that comes out to be 30 hours. So it should take me 30 hours to drain this battery if it was just connected to my Wi-Fi router. Now the Wi-Fi router is showing 12 watts right now, but remember a lot of that power is going into just running the inverter itself. So I'm kind of curious to see how much time it'll take to drain the battery down if just the inverter is turned on. So I'm just gonna to top it off real quick and then we'll see how much time it will take just to drain the inverter down. All right, it's 1.30 p.m. We're at 100%. I'll we'll go ahead and turn the inverter on and we'll uh, just let it run for a few hours. Okay, it's been a few hours and looks like the, it just automatically turned off, still at 100%. That's exactly what I wanted this to do, actually, because not all inverters do that. And I leave this on all the time, and it'd be crappy just to randomly come back to this, and it would be dead. The dramatic. Okay, guys. I gotta do another solar test. Okay, really? Tim? Yep. What's a what? You good with that, bro? No. <laughs> okay, let's see how long it's gonna last. <laughs> okay. The TV. Because we're doing an experiment to see how long the power station will run the TV. So you ready to watch it? You want to watch the show again? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, it is 10.35. It's been almost three hours. So 2.75 hours, roughly. And I've used 19% um, of the battery. So using the same equation we had before, I should be able to run my TV for 14 and a half hours. Okay, let's see how much power it'll take to run the laptop. Now this laptop is 
Okay. Larger than most, this is a really large power strip here. Now in my uh, power station that I have here, it has a DC battery converts it to AC, which is what I'm gonna plug in here. And then this power strip goes into the laptop and this converts it back to DC. So obviously it'd be way more efficient if you just use one of these little DC ports to go into the DC outlet pin here. And we're not gonna do that for this test, but I'll just show you how you can do that if that's what you wanna do and make things more efficient. Yeah, so if you look at the writing on the power strip here, the input, it takes 120 volts AC as the input, and then the output is actually 19 volts. Yeah, so this is a 19 volt laptop, pretty common, not the 12 volt, which is what you might think. So if you got uh, 12 volts coming out of your power station, you need a 12 volt to 19 volt converter, and uh, you can buy those online. And this laptop requires a whopping 12.3 amps. So you need to make sure that step up converter can supply at least that many amps. And then after you get one of those, you need to make sure that you have the polarity correct with your barrel pin. So it looks like the center pin is the positive and the outside um, of the barrel pin is the negative side. So in addition, you'd have to buy the right size barrel pin. I know you can get like kits online that have a bunch of different sizes. So it is possible to go from DC straight to DC here, but it's just kind of tricky. So we're just gonna go with the inefficient route for this test. At 7.30 in the morning, uh, both batteries are topped off. Plug in the laptop and uh, see how uh, long it takes to drain this thing. Okay, it has almost been three hours and we've used 15% of the battery power. So if we use the same equation we were using before, if it takes me 2.75 hours to use 15% of the battery, that ratio should be equal to the total time it will take me to run 100% of the battery to zero. So I can just use simple algebra, solve for T. I forgot to add the H for hours, so I'll fix that. And it comes out to be... Um, 18.3 hours. The battery will run my laptop for 18.3 hours. But anyways, I want to thank DJI for sending me this power station. I've really wanted a power station this size that's this powerful. So I am going to be comparing this power station to the uh, Delta II. I need to do some more research and uh, look at how these pins work. But watch for that video coming out shortly. But uh, thanks a lot, guys, for watching. We'll talk to you later.